welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Monday, the 11th of September, 2023. Uh, today, pretty straightforward business. It's just going to be about prepping the main skins for fitting onto the wings. Uh, just as a reminder, next up is attaching the top skins. The very last will be attaching the bottom skins, but I think that I'm going to go ahead and prep all of those skins right now. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight main skins, and then two wing walk doublers. So really 10 skins that need to be uh, edge prepped, deburred technically, um, although there's really not a lot of deburring to do after all of these holes have been reamed. Um, and plus those holes are gonna be scuffed for priming. So anyways, that's enough about that. Let's just start building an airplane. All right, episode 102, let's do this. I've got a total of 10 skins that need to be prepped if you count the wing walk doublers as skins. Um, all of them require edge finishing. There's a little bit of deburring, like I mentioned in the intro, when you, when you clean those holes out with a reamer, um, you're usually left with no burrs at all. And because I am priming the rivet lines, all of these are gonna be scuffed with Scotch-Brite, which would knock down any burrs that were there. But I always go along with my fingers along all the rivet lines, just to make sure that there isn't an odd burr there. And if, I, if there is one, I'll go ahead and hit it with the deburring tool. Um, what I don't wanna do is go crazy with the deburring tool and end up chamfering all of these holes. I want nice, clean, holes with squared off edges okay so this um session is about 2.1 hours on the nose uh two hours and six minutes and a lot of it was removing the blue vinyl my advice to anybody who's getting into this um, especially if you live in a humid climate is follow van's advice and take that blue vinyl off as soon as you get your kit and then store that stuff, those skins and whatnot, someplace where they're not gonna be um, close to concrete, um, which is what this garage is. Um, those are conditions that lead to corrosion. So if you do what I did with the wing kit, which was store it um, in the crate, laying on the floor in the garage, those are the prime, um, the, the, the prime circumstances for corrosion to develop. And especially if you leave the, the blue vinyl on um, along the edges uh, of a lot of those pieces, you'll start to notice some aluminum oxide uh, happening in those spots. So if <laughs> we all wanna leave the, the vinyl on to protect the, the skins from scratches, but the reality is um, it's gonna get scratched. I mean, there's going to be scuffs upon scuffs upon scuffs, and um, I would rather deal with, um, you know, minor scuffing and scratching um, when it comes time to finally paint the thing than to do a bunch of hard scuffing along the all of the edges to get rid of any corrosion that's there. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm left with in some spots. So... Uh, you'll notice right here, I have this clear white vinyl. A few of the pieces that I had, I had that versus the blue. Um, that white vinyl is a little bit thinner and much more difficult to get rid of than the blue. Um, I'd say it's about just about as sticky, but because it's thinner, it's more prone to tearing. So it's just harder to get it off cleanly. Um, everybody complains about taking this stuff off, and that's another reason probably why a lot of us leave it on for a long time. But um, yeah, if I, I could say, uh, well, you know, the next time, uh, well, the next time would be whenever I get my fuselage kit, um, which uh, again, has not been ordered yet. So um, yeah, uh, I will be more diligent about um, removing the vinyl and uh, storing all of those pieces uh, inside the house in a spare bedroom until they're ready to come out and get worked on. Anyways, um, yeah, that took up a big portion of this two hours, getting all of those um, 
not cleaned up, but de-blued or de-vinyled. Then we'll get into the edge finishing. Uh, spoiler alert, I did not finish all of the edge finishing on all 10 of these pieces. Um, there is one other bit of work that has to be done along with the edge finishing, and that is with the, the top main skins. Um, on each one of them, you have to create a scarf joint meaning that there are two pieces that overlap and um, you kind of mark off a section that you're going to progressively thin down towards a corner so that when those two pieces are overlapped, their thickness is nearly matching the thickness of the fuel tank skin where those, those all come together. Um, it's a cosmetic thing. It's not um, that critical. In fact, I, I'll have to look forward to the plans, but I don't think that it's called for um, on the bottom skins, just the top skin, um, just so that you don't have this obvious, um, you know, two pieces of 25 thousandths thickness um, stacked on top of each other immediately adjacent to the fuel tank skin where it, um, they all come together. The fuel tank skin is 32 thousandths. So um, I'm not saying that one should try to get both of those overlapping parts at the corner down to 16 thousandths a piece. Um, that's pretty thin. Um, but just get it close so that when it comes time to paint or whatever you do, um, that transition will look a little bit, that trans transition between the tank and the overlapping leading edge, or rather main skins, will kind of look less wonky. Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah, this, this uh, clear vinyl is not the most fun. Uh, ear, hearing protection is going on. Um, I'm using a little tiny two-inch um, Scotch-Brite wheel. Two-inch, I think? Yeah. On a little uh, air die grinder. Man, I, that really makes quick work of these edges. Um, I just, I didn't even really realize until... I started working on this today that in this entire time, this is the first time that I have worked on a just a flat skin. Every skin that I've worked on so far has had curves. Um, that's certainly true for, at least for RV7, RV8 builders. And there may be others that have folded trailing edges on the um, ailerons and, and uh, rudders. But anywho, yeah, so these are much easier to do the edge finishing on. In fact, the edge finishing on these goes faster than removing the blue vinyl. Um, so you'd think that I would have gotten through all of the edge finishing, except that I'm going to get into um, filing down uh, to, to work on that scarf joint. Well, the other camera died, and so we're left with this one. And it's right on the edge of frame. And this is the reason I, oh gosh, you can't really even see it. Okay. The reason I wanted to do this now was just sort of slowly experiment with um, what it's going to take to do that, um, what the most effective tools are. And so what I found is that clamping it right to the corner of the table so that the corner is really well supported. I have a variety of files that I can use. Um, and then I've got this sanding block to kind of clean it up a little bit. So I use the Vixen file, I use the flat file, two different flat files um, to try to work it down. You know, I, I want to be careful that I don't just go crazy with it and create a, a knife edge. And it turns out it, it's a bit of work, at least for me. <laughs> it's a bit of work to get it down noticeably thinner and so that's fine so i spent probably a good amount of time doing this and checked it several times and put it down and clamped it down again um and i think ultimately i got the corner the very corner of it down to about sixteen thousandths maybe but only i'm talking just about a half inch around that corner and then it starts to um get progressively thicker from there up to the the normal height. And then what I ended up doing was on the die grinder, I took off that Scotch-Brite wheel and grabbed sort of like a coarse buffing pad to clean up um, 
to clean up those edges and you'll see that coming up here in a second and that just kind of prettied it up and made me feel a little bit better about it so i'm pretty happy with it my concern is not to is not that i'll underdo it my concern would be overdoing it so um which is why i want to go uh slowly with it you know you do all these work getting these skins ready in terms of like getting them fitted and match drilled edge finished and everything it'd be a shame to mess one up especially because that's a pretty large sheet of aluminum if you had to replace it um the aluminum wouldn't cost much but the shipping would um so yep i think here uh, a little bit of buffing cleaning sort of um and then coming up here in a second you'll get you'll get a look at uh, a photograph of what that thing looked like. So that's as far as I got, basically. Um, in the next work session, I'll probably be able to get through all of these because the edge finishing will go really quickly. And now that I kind of know what I'm doing with making the scarf joints, the other four, the other three pieces that I do, those shouldn't be too bad. So here it is. Um, not that clear, but that's 102. We'll see you in 103.